good morning everyone i am dr kumaresh i am a practicing uh, entrepreneur what do you mean by practicing entrepreneur i am a doctor who is doing his medical practice as well as an entrepreneur and uh, this subject is something which is close to my heart because i really believe this is the future but unfortunately i really, you know i think we are not at uh, reach the stage where this can be implemented so basically i am going to tell a few things of what do you mean by remote health monitoring what do you mean by telehealth and why is this uh, subject for the interest of the west and uh, why have we not broken the ice here in india and uh, to i'm sure you know you would have you would have received my introduction but just to give a brief uh, apart from being a practicing doctor i have my own startup i am also a national mentor for atel innovation mission and i also mentor a lot of institutions and guide them on uh, the startups which pertaining to the healthcare as a whole so and there is not uh, and i don't restrict myself to something which is related to my speciality which is basically ent and uh, head and neck onco surgery so having said that let's uh, get into the topic so now why is this topic so important in the west well you know i'll be telling the future slides about the cost factor and all that but uh, one we have to understand that as the life expectancy is increasing all across the globe and uh, so is the need for us to take care of the elderly people like if you see the chronic diseases in uh, us not only us everywhere it's increasing and some of the chronic diseases or the high blood pressure asthma diabetes heart diseases and now the cancer these are just a few of them but there are much more and if you look at it you can see in the us they're spending close to about 3 trillion dollars in annual healthcare costs and that's a huge amount which can be saved and utilized for something else now they also they did a study and found out that the chronically ill 5% were eating up up to the 50% of the total healthcare cost you know i you know for people who have been in the us or who have just uh, left the us come back they will know i did my training in the us and i'm aware of the healthcare cost and also aware the reasons of why the cost is so high which is beyond the purview of our discussion today so and if you look at it the lts of the population make just up to 3.4 so the ultimate goal is to keep a patient as healthy as possible and ensure that is taken care of at home rather than the patient coming into the hospital once the patient gets into the hospital the dollar just uh, you know the clock keeps on ticking and most of the patient is going to come to the er and how does the remote monitoring help you know i'll tell you the future slides but uh, basically the the doctor gets what is happening to the patient in this environment you know when we go and meet a doctor the values are going to be different for so many reasons one is going to be the anxiety the travel and all the things and the doctor is not able to make out as to whether this is a normal or whether it's a just a uh, the anxiety induced now as i was saying look at the cost factor here you know per day stay it's close to about 5000 us dollars in the hospital and this is we are talking about the the lower limit so the upper limit is going to be much more and in a country like india it's almost i will say 15 to 20 times lesser and the medicine cost is also extremely high in the us and that's because you know that they do the r and d and all those costs are added up so if you look at it in the us the medicine cost about thousand dollars just to give you a brief and a year drop which cost about 50 rupees year will be costing you close to about 1500 in the us so you can see the the difference of more than 25 to 30 times the cost in india and all this adds up to your overall bill and this is what the us wants to stop and prevent and uh, you know i always tell my patients the healthcare is the one which is the main indicator for pulling the gdp of the us and just to give a brief these are the things which have been uh, developed in the us and you can see the values in the us it's you know the profit level is almost more than 1000% so and this is for a anti diabetic pill 
so one can understand even you know until now there was one medication anti diabetic pill in india which was not under drug control and the price was huge when i say huge for indian standards it was very high and now having brought under the drug control the price has drastically come down to the extent most of the pharmacies do not even stock it and uh, you know here you can see the hospital admissions without home care it's about 66% with home care they are able to reduce it and the same thing with the doctor visit and uh, you know for a doctor visit even though your insurance covers you also have a copay which is going to be much more costly than what you pay for a doctor in india so having said that let's find out what do you mean by remote health monitoring so it's a method of healthcare delivery that uses latest advances in technology to gather patient related information and monitor patients in non clinical environment this is the most important thing non clinical environment where the patient is going to be comfortable such as in his home or if he is in assisted care living over there and as of now these are few of the things which are readily available you forget the ventilator but apart from this most of these are available as you know bluetooth devices which can be hooked up so generally what happens is once you sign up you'll be given the devices which you have to plug it in and uh, you have to get into an agreement with the service provider in the us the insurance takes care of it and why they take care of it i will tell you as we go on and here you know as i said the patients data is uh, collected and it's stored on the cloud repository and the vital signs now this is something which you have to understand so let's say over a period of time your bp is x or x plus 1 so the doctor makes it as if it goes beyond x plus 2 or below x minus 1 the doctor needs to be notified so meaning if that reaches then there's something wrong immediately you will be called in if not then the variation is being noted and what you are doing or what was increasing it or what was decreasing is being noted or accordingly your lifestyle modifications are advised and in that way you know your health it is taken care of and as i said you know there are two ways one either you get into agreement with a service provider and you directly correlate with your doctor which uh, you know in most of the places doesn't happen or the clinic or the office in the us most of the things is taken care of by the nurse practitioner or the physician assistant who monitors and then you know they get in touch with the doctor or if anything is to done or the patient will be called in and varadol can be used it can be used in your home for to monitor you or in transport like you know in the us is if you're going to call 911 before you could come in the vitals are sent to the hospital so that they prepared as to what to expect and physician consultation as i said let's say you are a patient of diabetes or high bp your data is monitored and then the doctor will know what why or what and he can modify your medications and all these are to prevent you from getting admitted or visiting the emergency room even in india we do something for the cardiac and also for the sleep studies we have the holter monitor where there's a condition of arrhythmia which you will be you know they will be fixing the monitor to you and you have to wear it for about 48 hours it's recorded and the doctor can download and see whether you got any arrhythmic things the what is a drawback i'll tell you the same thing with the sleep studies and the clinical trials just make a note of this clinical trial i am going to talk about it uh, towards a uh, you know end of the discussion of the of my presentation now as i said what do you mean by telehealth and what do you mean by remote monitoring remote monitoring is nothing but part of telehealth what do you mean by tele telemedicine tele education and you know the remote monitoring is part of the telehealth so you know if someone says oh i'm doing telehealth don't think what it is and what is remote monitoring remote monitoring is just a part of telehealth and telehealth is the heading or i will say it's a main topic under which remote monitoring is part of it and this is the same thing where you can see remote monitoring occurs under preventive care so or the telecare where they ensure that they monitor you and uh, give you all the necessary advice or lifestyle modifications or medications and you know this is a very interesting thing which you have to note 
telehealth and remote monitoring are not just software and hardware what do you mean by that it's not about putting your devices sending your data to the cloud to the doctor doing it it's all about the patient well it's all about taking care of the patient as an individual and all these have been done to ensure the patient or the person stays healthy and uh, this is the definition as per mr j sanders who is a former president of the american telemedicine association now as i said what are the benefits of the telehealth or the remote health one there is a enhanced patient physician collaboration what do you mean by that the doctor you know is aware of what is happening to you your recordings are sent to him not just what he sees but what is happening for the entire day and he understands when like you know i get some patients with vertigo and we really don't know when they get it because but let's say if you have something i will know what when they do is their vertigo increasing when they do it's decreasing that will help me in managing the care and helping the patient because you know anything which is out of the ordinary will also affect the patient's health overall and this is the one you know these two are the main things for remote monitoring wherein improved health to through timely care and in turn decreasing the cost now this is something and i just said how to show you that how does it uh, decrease the cost so in mississippi they did a thing where they rolled out remote monitoring for diabetic patients and they found out that 13% of the patients are diabetics so they came out with a remote monitoring thing and they found out the cost saving per 100 patients was $339,000 that's a huge thing which projects to about close to about 200 million per year you know which can be used for something else so this is how the cost saving happens and over there it's a insurance and especially if it's going to be medicare and medicaid that's going to heat up into all the taxpayers money and you can see why let's say if you're going to visit the emergency it's going to be $1600 if you're going to visit a physician it's going to be 1000 it's going to be $130 but telehealth is going to be just about $50 so you can see between $50 and $1500 you know it's almost about a 30 times cost reduction right here and if it's this is for one patient so if it's going to be 100 patient 1000 patient you can imagine the cost saving this is what i said in the us they have it in such a way that it is very beneficial to the doctors to the nursing homes to the hospitals and to the clinic you know until otherwise it's going to benefit the service providers and if they have to spend their time no one is going to be interested over there they have cpt codes for just for telemedicine and for monitoring and each and everything has got a code to set up your paid for the use of the device you are paid for the monitoring every 20 minutes you are paid and you know it's going to be almost about $200 per patient so you can see it's going to be $1300 this apart from the consultation charges now the same thing people try to replicate in india and they said why don't we try it and more so because you know we are all staying in an urban location so it's very easy for you to access any doctor walk into any clinic but one should understand that more than 85% is staying in a rural area you know i hail from a village so i do know what was the, the medical care or what was the healthcare care over there and it's really very pathetic and it's very easy for people to say that why don't doctors go to rural areas it's because of certain factors which is beyond the topic so i'll just leave it at it but yes it's not that doctors don't want to go but there are certain factors which prevent some from going and so here you can see for there is a doctor who is apart from saying 1000 or the your yeah, who criteria is there should be a doctor for every 1000 people but in india it's much 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 more and that is what is killing them and the second thing is in india 70% of the healthcare is taken care by the private sector you know of late i have been seeing in uh, linkedin where people say oh not only really mosquito even this hospital sucks or someone saying i went uh, this is a pay you know you should understand most of this private healthcare are funded by investors and just like our startup where you expect profits naturally the hospitals need to profit and most of them are 
or you know they are uh, on the bse and nse index and naturally even the investors would like to see some profit the shareholders would like to see some profit naturally the cost is going to increase and if it's going to be about 70% so less than 30% is being taken care of by the government and that's far and few now this is one interesting slide which i really want to take a note why does remote care or for that matter any healthcare doesn't succeed okay one most of the patients don't have money for hospitalization or for treatment so either they have to do, get into the savings why because more than 80% don't have insurance so you know when we say hospitalization it's occurring of just around about 20% of the population so just imagine about the 80% what's happening two if you see over here more than 50% it spent on medicine when you say medicine it's not about purchasing medicine when uh, people fall sick the first thing they do is they just go to the pharmacy tell them look i got a cold i got this they give the symptoms and the pharmacist gives some medicines yes even scheduled drugs are being given over the counter and you know so that that's a kind of environment we are staying in now this is one topic which i always say to state the, the condition of our current country you know the government came out with a policy to do cochlear implantation for children who are profoundly deaf meaning children who are born who cannot hear and this is standard of care everywhere in india there were a lot of limitation then the government came out with a policy where they say any child who is profoundly deaf can have a cochlear implantation and the cochlear implants are not cheap they are extremely costly the most basic one cost about 6 lakhs and the advanced one cost about 12 lakhs this is apart from the surgery fee or the rehabilitation which forms a major part of the care and the government was paying for both the implantation as well as the rehab so they are giving the lion share but still it didn't succeed you know why because the patients were not able to afford either for the battery or they were not able to afford to come to the rehab center for rehabilitation they were not even able to pay the bus fare nor were they able to take off from their work so this is the kind of situation we are in in india and you know this again in spite of the medicines being cheaper in fact there have been lot of governments who have raised a red flag saying india is giving medicines cheaper and they are you know losing out but we should also understand the situation of the government and that's why the government is uh, capping on the price of the strains and medications and bringing them under essential commodities which is a very welcome move now the other things which why remote care or for that matter healthcare startups don't flourish in india is what the legalities in india doctors come under the consumer protection act meaning if there is going to be any deficiency of care the doctor can be sued but now the it act of 2000 says that the service provider is answerable meaning let's say if i'm going to use a remote monitoring device if the device is going to be giving me wrong reports and if my treatment is going to be based on that then the startup is not liable but the doctor is liable so even though the doctor may not be at fault the liability will fall on him rather than on the technology that he has relied upon and this is something which everyone needs to note and this is the reason why majority of the startups you know don't scale up beyond certain extent we can see them initially getting funding but then they stay because they all make a mistake of not involving a doctor in their idea stage they all start looking for a doctor once they are going in for a series a funding when the investor says you have to have a doctor by then it's a too little too late and uh, you know it's a downhill path two you know most of the remote care they say we are integrating ai in fact a lot of startups approach me saying oh we have ai i just laugh and say do you know anything about ai they say oh we have 100 patients we have used ai i just you know i give them a piece of my mind but anyway yeah let's say ai diagnosis there have been lot of uh, bad things in the news where the ai has fumbled if this is a case who is going to be liable again it's going to be the doctor third there is no clarity about who's owning your data there have been again lot of issues with this 
wherein the government has said the doctors need to have the record for about three years, four years. If a doctor needs to hold it, and if he needs to secure it, then that's going to involve cost. But again, the patient is not willing to pay for the cost. Where you know in India, the patient thinks twice even for to pay a consultation fee of 500 rupees to a doctor. Then how can the doctor ensure the data is going to be safe? And where is the remote monitoring going to work? Two. You know, if there is going to be hacking, you know, right now there is something happening in Delhi where one of the premier institutions has been hacked. But yes, since it's a premier institution and uh, since under directly under the preview of the government, they were able to find out. But if it's a private player, then the private player is responsible because he is going to be said they didn't take enough precautions. Uh, you know, there has been a study where they found out investors, they're not uh, too enthusiastic to enter into the Indian market, especially as long as healthcare is concerned, because they found out in India, it's just returns is just about 1x, whereas everywhere else it's about 7x or 5x. So what is the point in them investing money, waiting for five years and not getting the returns? Even the so-called unicorns, we all know you're reading it. And you know, after they reach the unicorn stage, the investor who existed and made a profit, but those who are still with them, or facing the heat. And that's, you know, the investor community is a very small one and people are discussing and this is what is certain. You know, I told you in the beginning, just to make a note of it, I was asked to give a consultation to this firm. I don't really don't want to you know, name the firm. This is an Indian firm wherein they received a huge investment of about 26% from a US remote monitoring service provider. And they said, look, it's successful, let's also do it. These guys received a funding of close to about 300 crore. And, you know, unfortunately, even after three years, you know, why I did it, I saw that was, you know, it, the name can be seen. So that's why I just went to the next slide. So even after three years, they were not able to penetrate the market. They called me and said, these are things they realized. And now they moved out from giving remote monitoring for chronic diseases to remote monitoring for clinical trials. And they are making profit. What do you mean by clinical trials? You know, India, it's much more cheaper to do a clinical trial than in the West. In fact, we have got uh, US multinationals who have set up shop, who have got innovation centers where they innovate here. And then they take it to the US and they make close to about 100x or 200x profit. And it's all legal, it's not illegal. They go through all the process and they get all the clearances. So on patients who have enlisted themselves for the clinical trials, they need to be monitored rather than putting them in the hospital, they're monitored at home. And it's much more cheaper for the whoever is doing the trial to pay for home care rather than making the patient to stay in the hospital. And this is what I said about AI. One is the data and even for remote monitoring to succeed, you need to have data. This is a study where we did it. We did a pilot study to find out whether we can diagnose chronic diseases using retinal images. Believe me, we got about 30,000 samples and 30,000 is a huge number. And all the mission was able to identify was, was just to find out where is optic disc. Apart from that, it was not able to do anything. So one can imagine the amount of data. Here we don't have open set and remote monitoring with AI, with blockchain, is something which will be extremely profitable to any organization. And for AI, we don't have open set in India. And the other challenge is in Singapore, they did a study, they found out most of the diabetic uh, you know, apps, which uh, give it here also we have so many apps and patients download thinking it's reliable. And they found out that uh, you know, each of the apps were able to provide only one or maximum two, but none were able to provide all the essential things which includes you know, your nutrition, your diet function, your blood glucose management, your physical active tracking, weight loss or weight gain, but none of the apps are able to provide any of this. And if this is the case, then and this is in Singapore, not in India. Now, the other thing which I told you about home care. Now, this is one wherein this is becoming a, a great fancy of nowadays where patients go in for the sleep study in their home, there are a lot of uh, you know organizations and uh, medical device providers who are entered it. And but is that reliable? Uh, definitely not. Why it's not reliable? At the end of the day, 
it just measures your oxygen level and probably that's about it and whether your movement or all that but not much but for yes to diagnose sleep apnea to great the severity we need to know all of this the respiratory airflow the body position the effort the blood oxygen saturation we need a ecg we need a eeg electroocclography electro myography but none of this can be done in a home based thing and uh, you know so it's like you just get about 20% and with that 20% if you are going to give treatment it's going to be disastrous because most of the patients with sleep apnea survive on their carbon dioxide yes not on the oxygen so that's why the gasp for breath when the carbon dioxide level increases they gasp and then they come down so if you're going to put a cpap and if it's not going to be normal they are not going to get benefit and 90% of the patients stop using it after about a month of using the cpap for the same reason so these are the challenges now so is it all so you know bad in india so can nothing be done no the government has come out with lots and lots of initiatives they have come out with something known as a national digital health mission in fact i gave a talk on this topic about what are the things which are done by the government here just going to put about three four slides but you know they have done an enormous thing they have everything in place in fact even during a covid the vaccines were tracked and the patients were tracked so that's how capable we are in fact even the bed availability was tracked centrally you know one of the i know the you know myself and another one professor from one of the top iits we gave a talk and uh, during the covid time and he was given the responsibility of uh, coming out with an app to do a real time tracking of the bed availability because there was so much of issue and only after that things uh, got settled down where in you know who was organizations were trying to make a profit were not able to and the idea of the government is they want to link everyone right from the private players the doctors NGOs, the administrators, the policy makers, all they want to make it integrated for the citizens and the patients. And they come out a lot of things. So, you know, they come out with a portal wherein all your information can be accessed, not only by yourself but by any doctor. And uh, they are also coming out with uh, something known as a primary healthcare program, where the chronic diseases are going to be monitored in the rural setup. And uh, you know, the same thing like remote monitoring, which is which will be starting very soon though it's operational it's not uh, fully scaled up they are doing a trial run but there are so much of things happening because the government is also aware that chronic diseases are increasing in india and that rural population forms a majority of the the indian uh, scenario they also have a hhis the medical colleges are integrated we already have tele radiology which is working wonderfully well uh, in fact i am doing a project with one of the professors of a government college and uh, on early detection of one of the cancers and also for a chronic disease and we are doing it with uh, one of the top iits in the country and you know the professor was telling already this is helping that the tele radiology where you know in a particular time of the day the rural areas will be sending their ct scans and uh, you know these people will be diagnosing it and they'll be integrating it and they also wanted ai to be started which will be helping them on shortly and then you have this uh, you know your own health record which many of the startups are trying to enter but they are not able to and uh, apart from this you know for the reproductive care you know that infant mortality rate was very high in india the maternal mortality rate was very high these two are one of the main standards to tell about the healthcare of a country and the government has successfully reduced it in fact india is now racing towards achieving the least uh, infant mortal rate and the metal in mortal rate and uh, you have to understand that in rural areas the patients they go to even to quacks for their treatment and most of the deliveries are being conducted at home so the government is also aware now they are training those midwives in uh, how to do the delivery and what are the things they have to do what are the things they have to do if some things don't work out how they can approach the government and all that and that is remote care you know remote care is not just about the chronic diseases but also in ensuring that you have a normal pregnancy you have a normal delivery in fact now many people are even preferring government hospitals you know since i have colleagues whatever i need i go to a government hospital because things are changing in the government hospitals and the more and more 
of the youngsters they also want to change they want to change the perception that the there is nothing can be done in fact some of the government hospitals has got the best infrastructure and equipment you can find and they are all jumping into to ensure they also do remote care because they are also bothered about the population and they are also bothered about the citizens and this again the tb monitoring now tb has been made as a mandatorily reportable disease and you know because there was a taboo saying if it's tb but now people have got tb since it's reportable they are coming out they are being tracked whether they are taking the medications and uh, you know there is going to be person who is going to give the medications and that is being tracked in real time so if you miss a dose you will be getting a message saying that you miss a dose and that is remote monitoring so india has achieved a lot towards uh, you know going towards the goal of remote monitoring and it's matter of time where we will be one of the world leaders in remote monitoring but yes we have not at reached a stage but we are almost you know going towards it we have all the infrastructure we have everything ready and the vaccine you know previously there was a lot of things people were saying oh the vaccine lose the efficacy no you know almost everything which is being taken by the anganwadi workers the vaccine carriers they have temperature which is monitored centrally so if there is going to be a drop immediately the center is alerted and they ensure the efficacy is not being lost and you know so this is remote care in a different way where it's not just about reducing the cost but this is ensuring that the public or the citizens of india are being taken care of you know covid our death rate was uh, one of the lowest and that's because of the way the government acted and uh, now the tb tobacco cessation lots and lots and lots of things where uh, and as i said i spoke about this topic just for about one and a half hours and there are so much things which can be discussed but i wanted to give a brief of what is actual remote monitoring and why it's not taking off india because until otherwise the insurance is going to be paying for it or the patients are willing to pay from their pocket it's going to be very difficult not only for remote monitoring for it's for the matter any startup in the healthcare to flourish and you know hopefully things change because as of now everything is being you know brought under price control which is a good thing and a bad thing let's say if you're going to do a surgery and if you're going to be paid about 500 1000 rupees naturally you're not going to have the enthusiasm to pay and be and take the risk and so until otherwise you know all this are going to be taken care of it's going to be a long way and hopefully with all these initiatives india takes a lead in remote health monitoring so i would like to thank mr rona kanti and if you have any doubts or question you can always email me this is my email thank you